Hi, I'm coming at you with a very candid get ready with me. Before starting the random chit chat, everything I use to get ready is always in the description. I try to make it as detailed and informational as possible. Let's see if I can multitask because I normally can't. I have been going through such an unexpected period of change that it's great. It's great. And one thing I've, I, hey, where, where's my, I need that sponge. I just got back from a trip. So I left this in my travel bag. I have been really soaking up the world, paying attention to the different ways people think. Sometimes we're lucky enough to bond with somebody and cross paths with someone that just feel so in sync with you in the ways that you feel about people or relationships or friendships. Just as special and rare that is to find that connection, it's just as likely that you bump into somebody who represents the exact opposite. Growing up as an insecure teenager, I was always afraid of disagreement or not afraid, I guess the effect that, oh, I don't know why I'm doing this. I could stand it, you can have the thick skin, but then inherently like on the inside, it would either cause me great anxiety or just make me generally very unhappy. There's that stage where I'm young, super, super young, and I think, okay, I really got myself figured out and I really want to figure out everything in my life and my entire path. That's the way I lived out a lot of my adolescence. And not that I don't have long-term goals, I don't plan the same way that I used to. I have become so open to change. And not only am I open to change, I am I am open and accepting to realize that I can look back at myself and realize like I'm really different from the way I used to be or I can remember thoughts that I had that felt so much like the truth and just felt so certain. And to be where I am now just a few years later and feel completely different. Most of the time you think like when you're a human being, you have that childhood age and then you have your adult age, which is like the most important period of time where you achieve stuff and then, then you retire and become, I don't know, like you just lounge around when playing the game of life on the board game and you start and you do all these milestones and it ends when you retire or die. I feel like I'm almost pleasantly surprised that there are many things that I thought I'm never capable of or I would never do um, and now I feel differently about it. Not that I'm the opposite or I turn the opposite but I'm no longer that person who was like no I would never do this. There are definitely things that I was judgmental about um, in a very firm way and it's not to say that I don't have opinions and judgments now I just like I just want to put out there that just because you don't say strong opinions doesn't mean you don't have them and I think it's impossible for someone to say like I'm not a judgmental person because you have your set of opinions based on how you were raised and what you're exposed to and what you're used to so it's natural that you approve or disapprove of certain things but what's important is how you treat people based on your judgments. This is the first time in my life I'm so conscious of figuring out what I truly believe in, um, what really matters to me. And a lot of it started with um, January of this year is when I was doing research and deciding that I no longer wish to pursue the fast fashion industry. Last year, I applied to anthropology. I went there to interview and I had another few Skype interviews and I was gonna start in the summer as an intern and then it didn't work out because they wanted me to start earlier than I was available. I think they went with someone else in the end. And later on, I got some follow-up emails asking me to apply for some other future positions that I um, am not gonna apply to. Sometimes I think to myself, should I have majored in textiles? If I never did that, then I would not be the person I am now. So I can't ever regret grip learning and knowing the things that I do. For example, when I visited the design headquarters, I was pretty disappointed and shocked that in the space, 
the offices it just really shows the reality of the industry they don't allow photos because it's intellectual property but I, I swear it's also partly because it was just a mess there was just so much stuff that was unorganized uncategorized and just heaps and heaps of things because when you're in that industry with just so much and it's all about quantity and the pace of that production um, it's really hard for you to actually treat every design and every garment with with care and with attention um, so it just it was just like whoa like okay I don't think I would be happy working in this office and with that I will segue into some thoughts that I've been collecting and I wanted to share when I wake up in the morning I like to get ready by listening to TED talks or podcasts I call friends and family just to catch up and technically by being here today I will learn something from you in the comments perhaps and you might have already heard these and maybe not so the first thing I want to share is the TED talk by Joseph Gordon-Levitt it came out a month or two months ago and it was great I think it was talking about how when creativity becomes a means to an end that's really detrimental to to an artist or to a creative. One thing that has come up so much in that TED talk in my mind is when he says to not see your peers as competitors but as collaborators and that is so relevant to the art realm especially because what is so inherent in art is collaborating and on top of that when you see your colleagues or your peers as collaborators you build off each other and you just tend to do better like everybody tends to do better so it is enriching it is really easy to fall into the trap of distrust and greed and jealousy and selfishness you can't help it sometimes um, everybody feels it just a little bit right it doesn't have to be part of your personality like if I ever feel that I really I really try to pull myself out of it and the next thought I wanted to share is from a manifesto that I read. Our class has assigned readings. This one is by Tanya Bruguera. It's called Manifesto on Artists' Rights. I believe it came out seven years ago. That entire manifesto had so many points that I think are worth mentioning. Uh, but one that I think is relevant says how personal truths are not universal truths. No matter how clearly a principle or way of life is to you like to an extent it's very important to share it and to express it and to be in dialogue with different people um, with your ideas but it is to an extent futile for you to feel so deeply and passionately about this one thing and really imagine that somebody else can live and think about that the exact same way as you that doesn't mean that we shouldn't try to express our thoughts and opinions and our principles because they can truly enrich people's lives and help them um, and you can be helped by other people's perspectives there's no absolute like you take things with a grain of salt sometimes one part is applicable and sometimes you just don't agree with something at all i don't really agree with that super famous quote i'm gonna paraphrase it in my own words but it's basically saying something like don't feel so pressured to live a certain way because you feel like that your actions will either be rewarded or punished because the universe will reward you for right and wrong there is no right and wrong only your actions and the chain of consequences as a result of your actions I see the logic in that I just don't agree with it and I've I've seen it so much and every time I reevaluate and I still don't agree with it because in my opinion like just saying like don't worry about doing right and wrong because at the end of the day the universe is not fighting against you or for you so don't worry about that but like realize that you exist around people so of course your actions have very real effects on other people and to say like don't really think them through because there's no right or wrong like what about acts of terrorism? Maybe that quote is just talking about other instances when you truly are at a crossroads and in, in a dilemma and you like really don't know what's right or wrong. Like, I don't know. My last couple of thoughts are from a classmate that told us 
something about how she listened to a speech. The girl who recited the speech was talking about identity. She was saying that at the end of the day, when you die and you are cremated or buried and you go into the ground, like when you're in the ground and everything else has faded, like your career is gone, like all the objects that you've owned, you're without that. It's just you that's left, just you. And who you are and how you treat other people is all there is, you know, when all of the other things fade. And that just made me think a lot about people that we look up to in society. Yes, you're so famous or you're so wealthy and so successful commercially, um, but I wonder like what kind of person you are or like how do you feel about yourself? And yesterday I discovered the author, artist, like fellow creative on YouTube, Savannah Brown. I'm sure a lot of people um, have known about her poetry. I don't know why it's taken me this long to come across a recommended video. And I really liked her chit chat video, which was about how to feel valuable and grounded in yourself when you're not necessarily achieving anything by societal standards. I feel like I used to be on this one track and now my trajectory is just so much into pursuing knowledge and pursuing like what I truly feel alive in. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I owe anybody an explanation. That doesn't mean that valuing these things is superior to valuing your career or monetary success. That is just not what I value, but that does not mean it is less valuable. All the power to them for living their life the way they wish. It's just a change in me in how I see an individual, for example, who I used to really want to follow the advice of or agree with, um, but then realizing actually you're not really happy like with all of the principles that that you try to tell me and convince me is so correct um and then realizing at the end of the day like you don't treat people the way i'd like to or you're you're not kind or you're not actually happy or you're not actually happy with yourself um so that doesn't mean that the way they're living needs to change it's their life but that doesn't mean that i have to live the way that they they think is correct weird cool and I, I just feel like the older i will get the less i will care because it's like who cares like at the end of the day who cares like that that, that sounds really um nonchalant and almost like irresponsible but what i mean is that life is short and i i don't care anymore if somebody doesn't value me the way i want because it only goes to show this is the person you are i get it and I guess I'm just learning who my real friends are lately and seeing people for who they are to me. You know, just because you're a terrible friend to me doesn't mean you're a terrible friend in general. That's really funny because like there are some people that are just such good friends but then they would stand me up or um, cancel plans and be extremely flaky and I just get it. Like not everybody clicks with everybody and that doesn't really say anything about me. Life has been just less anxious for me and that's great it's definitely filled with confusion a lot of struggle but okay that's part of life like i don't know yeah that is it for today that's been on my mind lately um i like sharing these thoughts i guess i, I used to always be sort of afraid for publicizing an opinion um but oh well i mean cool if you don't if you don't like it then you don't like it if you do then you do so this is my makeup it's really simple and clean i don't do eye makeup on days that i'm not gonna really go out um and wash my face it's so much more tedious when i have to remove mascara i'm gonna bike to the grocery store because i really need more food and then i'm gonna cook myself a late lunch and get to my work for the first time in a long time too like i decided you know what not gonna go into it this week. I'm just talking way too much. Um, that's all for today. <laughs> Literally like a scramble of thoughts. The next thing you'll see from me is a collaboration with Everlane. I was really excited about that, but also really stressed out because they had they had a really tight timeline. I will see you soon. Thanks for tuning in. Take care.
Take care. Bye. You are my favorite place to go. You're at the end of my favorite road.